Mikel Arteta most recently decided on a tactical switch, switching from a 4-2-3-1 to a 4-4-1-1 and so far it's worked a treat. Arsenal have collected wins from both league games since the switch, beating Aston Villa at home 3-1 followed by an impressive 2-0 victory away against Leicester at the King Power Stadium. The 4-4-1-1 shape isn't too different to Arteta's so far favoured 4-2-3-1 but since the switch it's proved to be more effective as Arsenal have looked more structured and energetic in their approach. In this tactical analysis we will analyse Arsenal's tactics so far using the 4-4-1-1 also in Football Manager we will try to replicate that and check out the results so before we get stuck into things make sure you are subscribed make sure you like this video and also you can leave a comment and this video is sponsored by the OneFootball app one Football and the RDF Tactics channel have chosen to collab once again. Downloading this app would help this channel out in many ways, but why exactly should you download it? The One Football app is an excellent app for football fans. It's the best place to check recent news, legally watch matches, yes, for free, and you can follow your team and be notified when something major happens. It's also great to check out the latest transfer rumours, and if you're like me, you don't want to miss out on any rumours, transfer season season can be fun. Once all the league starts up as well, it's a great app to check statistics. This channel creates recreations, using the OneFootball app helps grab vital stats but also you will have access to team lineups before the football match starts. This is a great app if you want to follow football around the world or get the latest news just on your team. So make sure you try it out but it does also help this channel out a lot and gives it many great opportunities to grow. So give it a go and I promise you won't regret it. Arsenal have shown variations when building out from the back on goal kicks. They have put on both more of a direct approach as well as the short passing combinations that we have seen already from Arsenal. Arsenal will use the more direct approach when being pressed. Both Aston Villa and Leicester on occasions have attempted to press Arsenal when building out from the back and by doing so they look to man mark Arsenal. To counter this, Arsenal's defence and central midfield will look to drop, dragging their markers with them and in turn this creates space between the defending team's midfield field and defence. Arsenal's wide men will look to occupy the opposition's wing backs whilst Lacazette and or Aubameyang will look to drop from the forward line into the space in front of the defence. Aaron Ramsdale will then either find one of the strikers with a direct ball bypassing the press and putting Arsenal in an advanced position with just one pass. Arteta's boys will also look to play out from goal kicks using short passes with the time, space and players in position to do so. The attacking midfielder which has been Lacazette would drop very deep into to the half space to add another body to give Arsenal a numerical advantage as the defending team attempts to man mark Arsenal. Lacazette has been vital during Arsenal's build up phases, dropping deep, creating overloads and linking up play but he's also stayed further ahead, pinning back defences, allowing space for any potential ball carriers, adding variation to Arsenal's build up phase. A Mill Smith role also plays a role when Arsenal progress with the ball dropping deep into the half spaces, creating those overloads and was helped by Nuno Tavares overlapping adding width to Arsenal's attack. This allowed Arsenal to manipulate space by making counter movements. The Congo would join the left side creating a triangle, making a run a left winger could typically make. With the Congo doing this, it also allows Emil Smith Rowe to come in central, the area previously occupied by the Congo to freely receive the ball and create for Arsenal. Arsenal's attacking shape during the build-up and creation phase has resembled something of a 2-4-4, with Saka so far being the furthest forward, as we've seen both Lacazette and Aubameyang drop to receive and link up play. And when Arsenal win the ball back, they look to counter in their transition. We've seen a slight change with how the fullback approaches the attack. Kirantini was a heavy attacking presence in the 4-2-3-1, often receiving and operating in the opposition's half but with the tactical switch, the fullback is a little less adventurous but that also forces the defending team to mark deeper in Arsenal's half. As Arsenal have been man marked, the defending team usually matches their wing back with Arsenal's but with Tavares being slightly deeper means that the defending wing back has more ground to cover. This also can create space for Emil Smith Rowe on the left with there being less defending presence. With an overlapping fullback and central midfielder, Arsenal created overloads in the wider areas where they play small passes 
pass and combinations before switching it to the isolated flank while knowing someone like Thomas Partey is positioned to curtail opposition counter-attacks. This method is also known as overload to isolate. The 2-4-4 sounds like an aggressive attack in shape but it can also offer defensive stability in central zones to recover possession and recover from errors. Even when Arsenal became exposed in the wider areas, Thomas Partey or Albert Lukonga would shuffle across and Arsenal retain some degree of balance as others regain their position. Alexandre Lacazette has played a vital role in possession. Though the striker is known to be a, well, striker, he's been deployed as a number 10 where he can show his excellent hold up and link up play, helping Arsenal progress with play. Lacazette has great ability to position himself in areas that disrupt the opponent's defensive shape, creating overloads in wider areas and making unselfish movements from side to side during the team's build up and creation phase. And what he may get less credit for is his work off the ball, being a workhorse. During both the Aston Villa and Leicester games, the French striker was tasked marking the number 6, the player looking to drop and receive the ball for the attacking team. When Arsenal win the ball back higher up the pitch, rather than counter-pressing attempting to win the ball back right away or force a mistake, Arsenal would regroup into their 4-4-1-1 shape whilst the ball near player may press the man in possession. Arsenal also actively look to force the opponents out wide as their structure of a square shaped back four with two centre backs and two defensive midfielders can force the opposition away vertically during transitions. In their games against Aston Villa and Leicester, Arsenal completed most of their defensive duels in the wider areas. In an attempt to win the ball back, Arsenal form wide triangles as their press intensifies and body orientation is key to forcing the play out wide. To force the play out wide, Arsenal will look to cut off passing lanes centrally whilst the player pressing will curve his run directing a player on the ball to play out to the flanks. As soon as the ball is played, Arsenal's wider players will begin to press the receiver to trap them or to limit their options out wide. The diamond is formed by the ball near players, so if Arsenal are attempting to win the ball back on the left side, the diamond could be made up of the left fullback, the left side of the central midfielder, the left winger and either Lacazette or Aubameyang to stop the opponents from playing out from the back. Arsenal would also use a man marking system but remain patient with their pressing. Against Leicester, they worked hard cutting off passing lanes and pressed when a Leicester player received the ball facing towards his own goal. This forces the play to go back again. When Leicester worked the ball out wide, Arsenal would then shift but still remain patient with their press until Leicester looked to play forward down the flank. Then, Arsenal's fullbacks will press and that wide diamond would be formed again. But unfortunately, that wraps up this brief tactical analysis focusing on Mikel Arteta's tactical switch so far, switching from the 4-2-3-1 to the 4-4-1-1. But will it remain? Only time will tell. For now, we're going to go into Football Manager, have a look at the replicated tactic, but also see how well Arsenal did, see where they finished at the end of the season, if they broke into those European places. But for now, let's go into Football Manager to have a look at the tactic. So in Football Manager, of course, we do have a 4-4-1-1, but it's kind of asymmetric. So we have the shadow striker on the right side, which is trying to replicate that Alexandra Lacazette role, dropping deep into that right half space. And then on the left side, of course, we do have that Obama Yang striking role. So for the team mentality, we are on positive, being patient on the ball, probing, waiting for that opening. But the attacking width is set to wide, try to funnel our play down those wider areas. For the approach play, we are going to play out from the defence, the passing directness is set to standard the tempo is set to slightly higher in the final third we are going to be sending in low crosses working the ball into the box in transition when the possession has been lost we are going to regroup get back into our 4 4 1 1 shape but when we do win the ball we will then look to make our counter attacking movements out of possession which is very vital and you may have to make some tactical switches as i did every 90 minutes so for the defensive line we are set to higher but the line of engagement is set to standard if the opponent is playing free at the back though with the the wing backs using a much higher line of engagement actually stops those attacking wing backs 
being so effective so when you are playing against a three at the back i would suggest you use a much higher line of engagement the defensive width is set to force the opposition outside of course it is and the trigger and press again very important now i started every single game on slightly more often and if you notice being easily dominated or you feel that you can press more just simply increase the press you can go for much more often at first but if you notice that's a bit too much you can drop it down to more often but i started every game on slightly more often around 10 minutes or 15 minutes often enough i did change it to much more often and then again in the second half i will drop it if i need to if we're winning 2-0 or whatever i may drop it or if the momentum switches to the opponents then i may look to drop off and be more stable now for the player roles in goal we do have the sweeper keeper on a supportive duty the left back is a wing back he's going to be marking tighter the right back is a full back who's going to be holding these positions sitting more narrow and marking tighter in central defense we have a nice balance between a central defender and the ball playing defender with the pivots being the box to box midfielder and a central midfielder on that defensive duty he's going to be closing down more often and marking tighter out wide we do have two inverted wingers now i actually believe that the right winger is more attacking than the left winger so the left winger can be on support but in football manager it did provide better balance using two attacking duties but what i did on the left sided winger i did have him to sit more narrower so he can be more involved in the possession and link up play in attacking midfield we do have that shadow striker trying to replicate that alexander lacazette role and lastly up top we do have a deep lying forward so that there wraps up the tactic we can now look at the results and data to see how well arsenal did using this tactic did we manage to break into europe let's find out So in the competitions in the Premier League, we did come second, we played 38, we won 29, we drew 6 games, 4 of those 6 games were away from home and we also lost 3 again all three of those games came away from home so we lost 2-0 away to manchester united we lost 2-1 away to chelsea and lost 4-1 away to brentford and i think we should forget about that brentford game in the fa cup we got knocked out in the fourth round by southampton and in the quarter final of the carabao cup we got knocked out by chelsea now in the cup games as usual i do play a heavy rotated side that helps keep the fitness for those premier league games in the premier league stats wise we don't dominate on any think literally so for the most goals we come in fourth most shots four in six for the fewest shots against six for the best pass completion not even in the top eight for the average possession not there for the most tackles one not there <laughs> for the most dribbles made though we are in fourth place for the most clean sheets we do come in second and for the fewest conceded we come in second again when we are using this regroup approach sitting back allowing the opposition to have some of the ball we aren't necessarily going to dominate on any of these statistics now for the player stats again we hardly dominated but Aubameyang did manage to score 21 goals in the Premier League Martin Erdegaard got 11 assists most shots for Aubameyang joint fifth for the most man of the match awards Aubameyang got seven and Gabriel got five most key passes Erdegaard got 134 so in fourth place pass completion and most tackles won nobody is there for the most dribbles made again nobody there most clean sheets though Aaron Ramsdale on 21 and for the fewest conceded Aaron Ramsdale on 23. Now we can look at the data hub now looking at the passing links this is a shape that we really really wanted and as you can see we can see that 2-4-4 shape that we spoke about in the analysis. Now the wing back is supposed to be a little bit more advanced than the right back but then again, this all depends on the opponents and how the opponents are set up. If they are even allowing our wing back to advance and why the right back is advancing so high. This can depend on the opposition setup. So when looking at the passing links, you must take that into consideration. Not every single time your shape is going to be the exact shape that you need it to be. We do, however, have our two central midfielders. As you can see, that nice box formed as that box defensive shape again that we spoke about in the analysis. Our right winger is the most advanced forward. Again, exactly what we want. Maybe the left winger is a little bit too advanced, but we are using two adverted wingers on the attacking duty. And you can see Aubameyang and Alakazette in between those two wingers. 
For the defending efficiency, we were pretty quiet and impenetrable in defence and for the attacking efficiency, we were on the aggressive shooting and clinical side of things. For the passing, you can see that we made fewer passes but we were accurate as well and for the team attacking, we were performing above the average in the attacking statistics, similar with the team defending. For the defensive actions, you can see most of them were very very deep in our own half and for the possession gained, again, more deep in our own half but this suits the counter attack when we do win the possession in that area we can then use our counter attack approach now lastly looking at the squad stats we didn't score a bunch of goals so we aren't expecting many players in double figures but what we do have is a mill smith roll scoring 10 goals and Aubameyang scoring 21 Pepe managed to get 8 goals himself, Sako managed to get 7 with Martinelli also getting 7. For the most assists, we do have Martin Odegaard on 12, Matteo Guendouzi getting 10 at Marseille, typical. Tommy Yasu has 9 assists, Aubameyang has 7 surprisingly so he was involved in a lot. Saka has 6, Emil smith -Rowe has 6 and Kieran Tini has 5 assists. But that there unfortunately wraps up this video i hope you guys have enjoyed it i have enjoyed recording it and this wraps up Mikel arteta's 4411 tactical analysis if you are new and you are enjoying my type of content make sure you are subscribed make sure you like the video also leave a comment as all of that helps the channel grow also shout out to all of my patreons i'll speak to you guys soon stay safe and peace out